take three. Hmm. Hi, it's Sunday and it's time for my mental health vlog. My mental health and uh, my moods have been all over and emotions have been all over the place this week. Um, so let's just kind of walk through the week. Uh, Monday was my first day back from work after the week long meeting in Maine. And um, I knew I was gonna have a lot to do because I could see my emails and stuff coming in while I was at the meeting, but I didn't really have the opportunity to do any work last week. So <sighs> Monday was very, very busy and stressful and, and uh, um, it just was a lot of work. And there was a lot of problems that I had to try and iron out and find information on. And it was a struggle on Monday which could have led me to Tuesday, where when I woke up Tuesday morning, I felt like I had been hit by a Mack truck. Um, I just did not feel good at all. My body hurt, my head hurt, my stomach hurt, I, just everything hurt. And um, I, I honestly don't know what caused it. And I'd found out the day before that one of my team members who was also in the meeting had tested positive for COVID. So I took a COVID test on Monday, it was negative. I took another one on Tuesday when I felt like shit and it was also negative. I didn't have a fever. I just felt really, really just crappy. Um, I ended up staying in bed until like eight o'clock at night, which didn't help with the fact that I was super behind at work and it didn't help with the fact that I'm super behind on patch orders, but my body had different ideas in mind, so I, mm, crap. Wednesday was a bad day. Um, I don't know, I don't know if y'all remember, I talked about when my psychiatrist tried to put me on an extended release of Folk One, which is my ADHD medication. And when I was taking it, like my moods were all over the place and like my I was very very short tempered and it wasn't good for me um or the people around me but it was that kind of reaction um so I don't know if maybe I accidentally put two of the little pills in my pill caddy that morning and didn't notice it or not but I was very very short tempered I was very very agitated I was very irritable um and I took it out on like some equipment on my desk and, and broke some things and um, not, not proud of that at all. And it's definitely not my, my normal MO, um, but I happened to also have therapy that day. So my therapist was like, you know, let's look at some of the warning signs that you can tell when you're getting angry because it's okay to be angry. It's an emotion, you know, emotions are valid, you know, but it's not really okay to, you know, Hulk smash things on your desk. I hit my keyboard pretty hard. I had scattered and had to find all the little keys that I'd smacked off of it, so. Um, and Wednesday night, I even snapped at my boyfriend and then I felt like I just wanted to crawl into a hole because I had been such a shitty person. I'd been such, had such an asshole and, um, I re very much reminded me of someone I didn't like and it was um, not a great day. So um, my, my therapist had me put a little note on my monitor because she knows how much I love post-its and it says, breathe, you are worthy of having a good day. And um, uh, also she told me, uh, or I told her, I'm like, you know, one of the warning signs I get when my when I'm getting frustrated is my little Apple watch will warn me that my blood pressure has gone up or my heart rate has increased when I'm not moving. Um, and that tends to be a warning side when I am getting frustrated or stressed out. So I have to, I have to be able to step away and breathe and walk and just recenter because if I just try and power through, I'm not dealing with the issue and it just compacts on top of that until it erupts. So. Wednesday was a really, really, really bad day. And I've apologized to my boyfriend a couple of times and he says that he accepts my apology, but I still hate who I was on Wednesday. Um, Thursday, um, oh, Wednesday was also uh, uh, meet the teacher at my, uh, my son's school. So uh, I drove down there after therapy. Um, and I got to see the school and got to meet some of his teachers and got to see, you know, see my son and, and whatnot. So that was really cool. Um, on Thursday, 
I was back at work, trying really hard to play catch up still. Um, and Thursday at work was fine. Honestly, I was much better than I was Wednesday. I was more focused, more centered, and I was getting stuff done. And honestly, I felt like it was the most productive day I'd had of the week, which is sad because it's almost the end of the week. But, um, and then Thursday night, uh, my ex wanted me to take my son a day early for the weekend um, because he had uh, some meetings on Friday and he wasn't going to be able to be around and watch him. So he needed, you know, he wanted my son to be here, which is absolutely not a problem. The only challenging thing was I also have my SAA meetings on Thursday night and I missed the last meeting because I was in Maine and I'm going to miss the next two meetings because of scheduling conflicts. Um, so I really wanted to go to this one and we're down to one vehicle. <laughs> So it was like, well, crap, how are we going to make this work? So I asked my ex, I'm like, are you okay if my boyfriend picks up our son? And I was instantly expecting a no. I'm like, let me try it, see what happens. And my ex was like, you know, that's okay. That's fine. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. And that was huge. Like that was really, really big um, for, you know, for me and, and for the dichotomy of my family is as weird as it is. Um, but that my ex was finally at a point where he trusted my boyfriend. He understands that my boyfriend loves my son. My son loves my boyfriend and my boyfriend only wants the best for my son. And I think that that's finally starting to, to sink in with my ex. So I'm glad that they have that kind of relationship. Now I will probably never have that kind of relationship with my ex's boyfriend for multiple reasons. Um, but I'm glad that at least three quarters of the adults in my son's life, uh, or immediate life are, are amicable and able to communicate and get along. And that's, that's great for him. So I was very happy to see my son Thursday night when I got home from my meeting, because I had a friend pick me up and take me to the meeting and then I Ubered home. I was very happy to see him until about 1230 at night or Friday morning, I guess it would be when he came into the room saying that his um, his stomach was hurting and uh, he felt like he needed to poop but he couldn't poop so I knew we had had spaghetti and meatballs for dinner um, I thought maybe it was like maybe the sauce was too acidic or it was hurting his stomach or he wasn't maybe maybe it was gas he just wasn't really describing it well so I gave him some Pepto and I sent him back to bed about 2.30 in the morning, he came back in and woke me up and was complaining about his stomach still hurting and he asked if he could sleep with me, so I scooted over and he crawled into the bed, which was adorable. Um, except for he didn't feel good, so that part sucked. And I wrapped my arm around him and fell back asleep for about 25, 30 minutes and then he got up and he left again. So I'm like, okay, well maybe he's feeling better, maybe he's going back to bed. Um, he woke me up again early in the morning, 6.30, 7 o'clock, um, saying that he had thrown up a couple of times, he hadn't been able to sleep, his stomach was really still hurting him. I really didn't know what to do. I took his temperature, there was no fever. Um, I didn't have any Tylenol, I need to put that on the grocery list. Um, but, you know, just I, just, I told him, like, well, let's take it easy for a little bit. And uh, he went back to bed for a few minutes. And then when I got up for work, I went to check on him. He said it wasn't feeling great. I'm like, do you want me to make you some breakfast, some cereal or something? He didn't want anything to eat. And he usually likes breakfast. So I'm like, okay. And then lunchtime, I went to check on him again. And he'd been really lethargic and like sitting on the couch all morning. And I'm like, what's going on? And he's like, I just, I really still don't feel good. And I've gotten sick a few times. So I'm, and I'm like, okay, well, if you are not feeling well you didn't eat breakfast you i, I made him like a cheese quesadilla for lunch because i needed him to eat something he took like a bite and he was just like i can't so i'm like okay something's wrong so um, i texted my ex let him know that you know we're going to take him to urgent care to get him checked out um and my boyfriend was awesome because he's like well i'm absolutely going with you you know so we went to urgent care and the doctor at urgent care was like based on how he is reacting to where I'm poking, it is either like his appendix or it's colitis. He, she's like, either way, one of those things need to be, you need to go to the ER and have them check you out there. Great. So I went to the ER and sure enough, appendicitis. What's funny about this, 
and it's hard to say anything's funny about this, was last year Joshua learned the word appendicitis and he started using that as an excuse for everything. Oh, I don't feel good. Maybe I've got appendicitis, you know, hypochondriac. So I made him go on Google and look up what appendicitis is, what an appendix is, and write a one page paper on it. So, you know, that was kind of punishment for being a hypochondriac. So as soon as the nurse said, you know, appendicitis, he started freaking out because he knew that meant surgery because I had made him do the homework on it. That backfired. So went to, went to the, the urgent care, the, went to the ER, that's part of the hospital where his, doc, his primary doctor works. And um, they were really not busy. I was, I was expecting hours to wait or whatever. They got us into a room. Um, when my ex got there, because he met us there, um, they only allowed two adults in there with a child. So, you know, you know, my boyfriend stayed in the lobby and um, my ex and I were, you know, with our son the entire time. And, uh, you know, of course the doctors were like, okay, we're gonna need to do surgery. It looks like, and we think it's going to be a simple surgery, which means he can probably go home today. Um, but if it's ruptured and they don't know until they get in there, then he would need to stay for five to seven days. And we're like, oh shit. So, um, so we were in the hospital all day. My boyfriend left. He said, I'll bring you clothes if you end up staying or I'll come pick you up later, you know, whatever you need. And, um, uh, I met with this anesthesiologist, met with the surgeon, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and I was really fine all day. I had one moment where I stepped out of the room to go see my boyfriend and I just needed that moment to just be like, I'm not okay. But then I pulled it back together and I was fine the entire night until they wheeled my son away for surgery and I couldn't see him anymore. And that's when I broke down. So I was very, very emotional. Pulled it together really quickly because I knew we needed to, but it was like, okay, he's not gonna see me cry. I can't see him, which I hated because I no longer had eyes on him. Um, but I knew he was gonna be okay. I, I knew he was, and I had done everything I could to convince him he was gonna be okay. Um, and he was, the surgery, it was like one of the fastest surgeries I think in history, because by the time they wheeled him away, to the time the doctor came out to let us know that he was done, it was 30 minutes. Like that's insane, absolutely insane. Um, and it was not ruptured. It was a very easy procedure. They pulled it out through his belly button. He had one little hole on his belly button and they showed us a picture of, of the appendix being pulled out of the belly button and it reminded us of that scene in Alien and Spaceballs where the little alien busts out of the guy's stomach and you know, whatever. Um, and, and the doctor took pictures of all of, all of our son's insides because he wanted to see him. So um, he was super excited about that. He was, you know, sending the pictures of all to his friends and stuff. And he's like, I no longer have an appendix. Um, he reacted very well to the, uh, what the doctor called the silly medicine before surgery too. Um, the, uh, they were putting it into the IV and then the nurse was like, do you want to finish pushing the little button, the, the syringe down to, to get your medication? And, and my son was like, sure. And she's like, you know, just do it slowly. So he, he pushed the rest of it in and she disconnected the thing from the IV. And then my son was talking and he was like, you know, blah, 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 blah. Whoa. <laughs> it really, really fast. And he started being very silly. And I'm like, I need to record this. Um, and of course I did. And, and I will save that forever. He was talking about how he could taste colors and all that kind of stuff, but it was uh, it was funny. Um, we ended up going home that night. Uh, my boyfriend came and picked me up, and 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 my son went home with with my ex because we figured it would be better for him to recover there as opposed to me bringing him home here Friday night and then taking him back Saturday afternoon when we're the whole point is for him to take it easy and relax. So uh, my ex took him home. Um, and uh, he's doing great now. Um, he's eating and he's sore and he's a little groggy still, but he's he's great. Um, Saturday, uh, my uh, my boyfriend and I hosted a baby shower for a friend of his, a friend of ours who's having twins. So that was really nice. Um, 
my hips started hurting while we were cleaning up from the shower, like intense pain and it was kind of sucky. So I took some painkillers um, and I was having to take painkillers pretty much all night long last night because I was having a really hard time sleeping because of my hip. And I don't know what caused it and I don't know where it came from and I want it to go away because I don't need anything else to deal with right now. Um, this morning, uh, my boyfriend and I went and got coffee and um, we looked for uh, a pink shirt for him because um, we need that on Wednesday. I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, and then just kind of came home and uh, I, I was working on work and patches today just trying to catch up because I, I just needed to today. Um, my boyfriend needed the pink shirt because he didn't have one. And we are going to see a musical on Wednesday night. It is Mean Girls. Anyone who is familiar with Mean Girls knows that on Wednesdays we wear pink. So we're seeing Mean Girls on Wednesday. We must wear pink. So I had a pink shirt he didn't, so we had to pick him up one. <sighs> and then I snapped at him again today because when I was recording my vlog a minute ago, um, he opened the, the, the office door and I was not mad at him. I was mad because I had already had to record this two times uh, because I messed up the first time and I was like, damn it. Um, which made him feel crappy. Um, and I'm evidently really good at making him feel crappy sometimes and not proud of that. I really have to work on that because I, I'm, I really do love him a lot. And I, I know that he loves me and he's worthy of being treated better than I've treated him this week. So I have to work on me. I'm always working on me, work in progress. Okay, there you go. That is my week. It has been insane. It has been busy. It has been very stressful and I have not been my best self. So I will continue to work on me. Check on your friends, make sure they're doing okay. Check on your loved ones, make sure they're doing okay. Check on yourself. Recognize your weaknesses and when you're not having a great day and try and find ways to better yourself. I mean, that should be your goal. Every day you should try and be better than the day you were before. So some days I do that, some days I don't. Have a great week, guys, and I will uh, talk with you again next week. Bye.